All right, and welcome back to my computer. You know, before we dive in and really dissect the investment property that I purchased and kind of take you through all the numbers, I want to cover off the ABCs of real estate investing because, you know, the bottom line is, is there's a number of different ways to make money through real estate investing. And there's, in my opinion, there's five primary ways. And I want to cover that off so that you have a real good foundation of what the process is and how you're going to make money in investing in real estate so that when you do decide to take action you have an overview and a clear picture of what's going to happen so let's jump in and take a look at that you see the first way that most people think about making money in real estate is through price appreciation you know it's the old buy low sell high you know I bought a property 10 years ago and, and today it's worth X and I made all this money and all this equity and that's one way that you make uh, money investing in real estate so here's an example example of that price appreciation right it's no it, it's not a very complicated form, formula it's basically the current market value what the property is worth today less what you bought that property for when you purchased it and really there's two ways that price appreciation happens and the first way is what's called natural market appreciation so again you bought that property the market gradually rose over time and through the market price increases you start to gain <clears throat> some price appreciation now that's the natural way that price appreciation happens the second way and this is kind of what fix and flippers are doing in their business is what's called forced appreciation so you buy a property and you make some improvements to that property and those improvements cause appreciation usually in a shorter period of time versus natural market appreciation and you're getting in and out of property with the forced appreciation so that's the two ways that 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 you make money through appreciation. <clears throat> now, how do you actually realize the profit from that appreciation? Well, there's two ways again here. Number one is you sell the property. So you bought it for X, it's now worth Y in today's market, and you, in order to get that money out, you go ahead and sell the property. Now again, that's kind of the fix and flip strategy, something that I don't really necessarily recommend for long-term wealth but you know for some people it works out well build up a little bit of equity and, and some cash and then you can get into uh, buying a number of properties but the one problem in my opinion with selling the property <clears throat> is that you're going to be forced and faced with capital gains tax right so I mean you're in a property you're out of property and the government looks at that as a capital gain so you bought it for X you sold it for Y the difference is going to be cap is going to be taxed as a capital gains now I'm not an accountant and I I would suggest getting an accountant I'm not giving you any tax advice legal advice so anything I say don't take it to heart go and do the research yourself I'm giving you my opinion only so again the first way to make money from appreciation is to go ahead and sell the property now the second way and what I like a little bit better is to go and refinance the property you see as the property rises in value then you're gonna have some equity that, that's sitting in the property now in order to get some of that equity out <clears throat> you go and refinance the property go to the bank say hey listen I've got this much more room can I take some money out and the nice thing about refinancing property is that loans are not taxed you take a loan you pull money out of the property you're not being taxed on that money as long as it's being used for uh, to reinvest in other uh, businesses or other properties and that sort of thing so again my preference would be to realize the appreciation <clears throat> through refinancing the property again I'm not an accountant talk to your accountant about it <clears throat> Now, the second way that you make money through real estate investment is positive cash flow. You know, when people talk about real estate, they always talk about cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Sure, cash flow is king, and positive cash flow is the end all be all with real estate investment. I mean, nobody wants to buy property and be sinking money in every month, right? So, positive cash flow is very important. Now, what is positive cash flow? All positive cash flow is, if we break it down to the ridiculous, it's income, all the money you make less expenses all the money you spend on the property so what type of income could you have in a real estate property well some of the income the primary income that you're gonna have on a real estate investment is gonna be your rent so you get some tenants in there they're paying rent every month and of course that generates income to you laundry possibly through a coin op or something like that maybe parking maybe you charge for parking or, or a garage or something like that that can all increase the amount of income you pull out of a property now expenses in a property you're gonna have things like mortgage interest 
of course, we're, unless you're buying the property for cash, you're going to have a mortgage. There's going to be interest expense. You always got to pay taxes on a property. There's no way to get around that. You need to have your property insured, of course, and then property utilities. If you're the one that's paying the utilities on the property, then that will be an expense for you. So all the income less all the expenses is basically what's going to give you your cash flow. If you are spending more than your income, then you're going to have negative cash flow. If your income is more than your expenses, you're going to have positive cash flow. What we're going for, of course, is positive cash flow. Now, number three, this is a real great one here. This one's called equity buildup. Now, people sometimes overlook this and not really factor this into the equation when they're buying real estate. But here's what happens. I want you to look at this graph. You see, the green area is your mortgage, okay? And what happens over time as your tenants are paying your mortgage down, your mortgage starts to go down from the uh, mortgage amount down to zero over time. Now, what happens as your mortgage is going down, even if the property does not appreciate a penny, so you buy the property for a hundred thousand and it doesn't go up in value whatsoever it just sits there and does nothing your equity is going up because your mortgage is going down and so this equity buildup is part of the return you need to factor that in to part of the return that you're getting from real estate you know most people don't really give this any thought they think well the property didn't go up in value I didn't make any money but you have to realize your tenants are paying the property down reducing that mortgage for you every every single month and you're gaining equity every single month. This is huge. Don't overlook this. Now, here's what I love to say. You know, I will borrow money all day long as long as someone else pays off my loan. I mean, get that in your mind. I mean, if I say to you, you know what, go out and borrow as much money as you want and so-and-so over here is going to pay off the loan for you. I mean, that sounds nice. That's exactly what happens. Let's break this down to the ridiculously simple here. You see, you start off, you're the investor, right? And what you want to do as an investor is you want to buy an asset. And that asset, of course, is a home. It's an investment property. Now, instead of putting all your money to go and purchase that asset, maybe you don't have all the money, but you can go to a bank. Now, what a bank is going to do is they're going to give you a loan. So you're going to receive money from that bank. You're going to take that money and that's going to allow you to own the asset that you want to purchase. And you're going to have uh, a way to get some cash flow out of that because, of course, you, know, you don't want to be paying off the loan that the bank lent you. So, but you still want to own the assets. So what do you do? You go out and you find a renter. Now this renter is going to have the use of the property over time. And in order to have use of that property, what they're going to do is they are going to pay off your loan at the bank. Now this is, this is real simple. And I think a lot of people just kind of don't really visualize it like this. I mean, you're the investor, you have the asset, your tenants are going to pay off your loan, and the bank is giving you the money to buy the asset. Now, what happens at the end of the day is you're going to own that asset free and clear, and you didn't pay for it. You know, that is huge. That is extremely, extremely powerful. And basically, you boil it down, you're borrowing money, and someone else is paying off your loan, and you're going to end up with the asset at the end of the day. This is a huge concept to really get in your brain, and it's something that will allow you to move forward and invest in real estate once you fully grasp it. I know this is simple, but really grasp this in your mind. Now, the fourth way you make money through investing in real estate is through tax benefits. You see, if you're a type of person that has a job and it's T forward income, you may not be able to write anything off against your income. Again, talk to an accountant. But let's say we have a, you get some real estate investments and now all of a sudden you set up a home office. You probably have a home office already. You know, Can you write that off against your income? Well, if you have real estate investments and you're in the real estate investing business, then part of your home office is going to be able to be a tax deductible expense. What else can you write off? Things like your car. Hey, you have to drive back and forth to your property to do showings and stuff like that. Do you not? Maybe you got to buy some paint at Home Depot. Maybe you got to do a couple of other things. You got to go to the bank and deposit checks from your tenants. All these things require a car. So now you've got a legitimate deductible expense on your car and you have other business expenses as well. Like I said before, mortgage interest is one of the main 
major business expenses you're going to have in your real estate business as well things like advertising and all that sort of thing maybe maybe you're taking out your tenants to dinner once in a while to thank them there are your clients right maybe you're having a business dinner with a potential partner and you need to write off part of that dinner because you're discussing real estate investing there's a number of different ways that you can use this real estate investing business to generate tax deductible benefits for yourself and deduct that against your T Ford income but again talk to your account but this is this is huge now one of the big benefits of tax deduction that a lot of people don't really look at as well is what's called depreciation deduction okay this is what's called a phantom expense because it doesn't really exist in terms of money that you need to put out so how what am I talking about here well here's what we're talking about you see what we know is that real estate goes up in value right so the market value of your property might be increasing but what the government allows you to do is actually depreciate the value of that property over time and so what the reason this is called a phantom expense is because it doesn't actually come out of your pocketbook you're allowed to depreciate the value of that property even though we know it's going up and what happens is you can deduct that from the income of the property to in the end pay less taxes massive massive benefit again talk to your accountant but this is something you should be aware of. Now, number five, the fifth way to make money through real estate investing, and this is my all-time favorite, is leverage, right? I mean, give me a place to stand and a lever and I'll move the earth. I mean, this is huge. And this is one of the major reasons why people get involved in real estate investing. You know, nothing compares to leveraging real estate, right? I mean, I, here's, here's an example. I want you to go to your bank tomorrow morning. Say to them, hey, I have $20,000 and, you know, I'd like to borrow $80,000 thousand dollars if I may and what I'd like to do is I'd like to combine my 20 plus your 80 and I'd like to invest a hundred thousand dollars but I'm not quite sure you know where I want to put the money I've got two choices one of the choices that I'm considering is I'm considering buying shares in your bank right so you know lend me eighty thousand dollars I'll put my 20 in we'll put the whole hundred thousand right into your company right into your bank to buy shares now do you think the bank is gonna do that deal for you I kind of doubt it. And if you ask them, well, my second option is to buy property. You know, A or B, what is your bank going to allow you to do? Buy shares in their own company or buy a real estate investment? And you know that the answer is B. But that is why investing in real estate is so huge because you can leverage your money to control and purchase larger assets and then, of course, have your tenants pay those assets off and that loan off it's just so powerful now why is leverage important well because when you use other people's money OPM it increases your return let's take a look at how this works right we're looking at an investment I'll give you an example purchase price of say one hundred thousand dollars now your cash investment your down payment say in this particular case is twenty thousand dollars so you're controlling an asset for a hundred thousand dollars with only twenty thousand dollars the remaining coming from the bank now here let's take a look at some returns right you've got positive cash flow in this particular property say of two hundred and fifty dollars per month so 250 times 12 is going to give you three thousand dollars in annual positive cash flow you can have some price appreciation now we're just going to use the number 10 percent as an increase of the annual increase the property is worth a hundred thousand dollars ten percent increase that's going to give you a ten thousand dollar price appreciation return and then we're going to have equity buildup like we talked about before by reducing the mortgage as your tenants are making payments so let's say in that year they reduce the mortgage by two thousand dollars now when you add all that up your total return and again we're not including tax benefits here the three plus the ten plus the two you have a fifteen thousand dollar total return now how does this look on your investment right what is the return on your investment well here's how most people take a look at this they say my total return was fifteen thousand dollars the purchase price of the property was a hundred thousand dollars so you know my return is fifteen percent they'll say well that's a pretty good return you know fifteen percent I can't walk into the bank and, and get that kind of return on my money so that's pretty good but here's what they're missing you see what they're missing is the total return on their investment you see they didn't have to come up with a hundred 
hundred thousand dollars out of pocket they only needed to come up with twenty thousand dollars this is the power of leverage so your total return is actually fifteen thousand dollars divided by your investment which is the twenty thousand dollars so that actually is a return of 75 percent and i'll challenge you i'll challenge you to show me another investment where you can get a 75 percent return on your money you know let alone 15 percent which is good already 75 percent is absolutely phenomenal now let's take a look at what are some of the types of properties that you should invest in now here's what I recommend you know you can do what you want but this is what I recommend and what I invest in single family homes duplexes or triplexes where you've got one or two or three units in them and then condos now why would I recommend investing in single family homes duplexes and condos very simple one reason only it's called liquidity you see when you want to put your money say for example in the stock market you don't want to put your money in some obscure company that you'll never be able to sell right you want to put your money into a, a company that if you need the money back out you can get the money back out and this is what single-family home investing is all about it's about being able to get in and get out very quickly if you need to right and the other benefit about this is that you're able to control things like utilities and all sorts of other things on an individual basis and these this is where you're typically going to see the greatest price increase and cash flow and all that sort of thing because you've got a lot more control over these types of properties you know some people say to me well Frank maybe we should look at an apartment block a commercial building or you know something like that and it's you know guys you gotta walk before you can run you know don't just try to get out of the gate and say we're gonna go buy 10 commercial properties and you know a couple apartment blocks I mean let's get your hands in the game get yourself a house get yourself a duplex get yourself a condo understand what you're doing start to build up a bit of a portfolio and start to build up your equity and start to build up your real estate investments don't just think you're gonna start out of the game hey zero down I saw a commercial zero down I'm gonna buy an apartment block tomorrow morning million dollars in cash flow and I'll retire in Tahiti it's not gonna happen okay so let's just focus on what works now let's get back to my personal investment property right I told you that I was gonna show you the goods so let's take a look at what that is see I bought this property for two hundred and twenty three thousand dollars seven hundred and fifteen okay that was my purchase price now what was my down payment I, it, at the time I put twenty five percent down because the rules for CMHC were twenty five percent or more and you could avoid the CMHC fees so that was my goal was to avoid those fees so I put twenty five percent down the rules are now twenty percent so at the time I put fifty five thousand nine twenty nine as a down payment in this property now the mortgage amount if you look at the two twenty minus the 55 my mortgage was 167 786 and my mortgage terms were the following I had a 25 year amortization I had a five year term and my rate was 5.15 so you can tell this was a little while ago with a bit of a higher rate than we can get today we can actually get a better rate than 515 today so that's to your advantage now those are the terms of how I purchased that property and the the rest of it here I'll show you my payments based on on those numbers are nine hundred and ninety one dollars per month my annual taxes that I pay on this investment property are three thousand eight fifty six and my annual insurance is sixteen oh five and my property utilities this is great is zero you see and this property because it's a single it's a dual family here um, but you know it's one of those scenarios and this is why I like single family you know duplexes or condos is because when you buy them you can actually have the tenant pay for all the utilities you know you don't want to get tenants into your property and they run the shower for six hours they leave all the windows open in the middle of winter or they run the air conditioning while they go to the lake you know that you just you know leave all the lights on when they go out I mean you don't want to have to be responsible for all that and run up your utilities and eat away at your cash flow you want the tenant to be responsible and if they want to do what they want to do go to it right you just don't want to have to be responsible for utilities in my opinion again you do what you do but this is what I would recommend 
Now, I'm going to show you a bonus. This is the investment property analysis. So I went through some numbers there, and you're probably saying, well, that's great, Frank, but how do I know how much you know revenue you're generating? How do I know what your expenses are? How do I know what your net operating income is? What's How do I know what your return on investment is? And this is what I do for my clients. All my clients will receive this plug-and-play Excel spreadsheet. Now, I'm going to show you this spreadsheet, and one of the things I love about this is I love to just pick a property and plug in the numbers and play with the numbers and what if I got this rent and what about this and what about this oh that one doesn't work you know let's try another property let's try another property it's a lot of fun to be able to just plug and play numbers into this system and I'm gonna take you through those numbers right now so you can see exactly how this all worked out and my cash flow and everything it's a real great system and again if you want to work with me this is one of the bonuses of being set up as my client so let's take a look at this cash flow spreadsheet all right, so here we are on the cash flow spreadsheet, right? So let's start plugging in the numbers, right? I gave you the numbers just a second ago. Let's actually plug it in on the spreadsheet. All the formulas are pre-worked out. We're going to start plugging in the numbers, and you'll see how this all works, right? So what did I say? Acquisition cost. So I bought the property for two twenty-three seven fifteen, dollars right? Now, the monthly rents that I have on this property right now are $2,250 per month. So that's going to work out to $27,000 dollars a year and I don't I'm not charging for laundry or parking or anything like that so my total income for the property is twenty seven thousand dollars now what are my expenses well like I said taxes we're never gonna get away from my taxes here were three thousand eight hundred and fifty six and then insurance of course you have to insure your property you're never gonna get a mortgage without it so my insurance on this property is sixteen oh five now again heat hydro and water I don't pay because those are the tenants expenses and vacancy rate, this is something I always plug in to my spreadsheet just so that I have a little bit of room for variance. Now, this property's been rented since day one. I haven't had a problem getting tenants in a great location near shops and stores and bus routes and, and schools and parks and everything else. So, you know, but 1.4% is our vacancy rate currently in Winnipeg. And so 1.4% of the rental amount being $27,000 is $378. So we add $378 as an expense, assuming that if we have the average vacancy rate being 1.4%, that we'll have an expense of $378 at some point during the year. It hasn't happened to me, but let's just be cautious, right? Repairs and maintenance. I mean, the property was in good shape. Condo fees, it's not a condo. Management fees, I have none of those. Uh, garbage removal. The reason I have no management fee, just so you know, is that I self-manage the property. I don't hire a management company. But if you did, you'd have a management fee there. But I know I self-manage the property. Garbage removal, the tenants take care of that, and then potentially other expenses. So when you add up here the taxes, the insurance, and the vacancy rate, um, I've got an, a total expenses of 5000 839 and then if you look at my net operating income basically that's 27,000 minus my expenses which is 5839 which leaves me with a net operating income of 21,161 now if you want to figure out what does that give me on a monthly basis it's seventeen hundred and sixty three dollars that's my net operating income revenue less expenses however we're leaving out a huge huge expense in this equation of course that's the financing and that's the mortgage interest and and all that so let's take a look here at what happened in that particular case well percentage down in this case like I said I put 25 percent down which was 55,929 so my total cash invested is 55,929 now, the mortgage amount, again, this is a formula, is going to be the purchase price, which was the 223715 less the 55929 leaves me with a mortgage amount of 167786 Now, my mortgage amortization, that's the length of my total mortgage, is 25 years. Remember, I told you that. And the mortgage rate, as I mentioned, was 5 Point one five. So we're going to plug in 5.15, and here we have it. Our mortgage payment automatically calculated for us at $991. So now let's take a look at our cash flow, right? Our monthly free cash flow in this case, we'll just move it up here, is uh, $772 positive cash flow every month. So the way that gets calculated is my net operating income, which is 1763 less 
my mortgage payment, which is 991, leaves me with 772 per month. Now, if we look at our annual free cash flow, we just take the 772, multiply it by 12, and that's 9,265 on an annual basis. Now, here's the cash on cash return. Very, very important. You see, what we want to figure out is how much money am I making on the cash invested? And so here we have annual free cash flow at 9,265. I put in 55,929, which is a 16.57% return, okay? So if you went to the bank, now just one thing on that return, that's not including any appreciation. It's not including the equity buildup, which happens every month. It's not including if I increase the rent next year. It's not including any of the tax benefits we talked about. This is strictly cash on cash. How much money did I put in versus how much money am I getting back out? So again, it's the equivalent of saying, I took my money, I put it in the bank, I invested in a GIC. What is my return on my cash? Same thing here. I took my money, I invested it in the property. What is my return on my cash? And in this case here, we're 16.57%. And again, that's not including the appreciation and all that other kind of good stuff. So I'd say that's a pretty good investment where you can take $772 month after month coming in in free cash flow and have a nice return of you know 16, 17% on the money you have invested. I'm sure you'd probably agree with that. Now let's jump back back in, I want to finish off a couple of more points with you here in terms of how we get moving forward. All right, now here are some common questions that people will ask or common comments that I hear sometimes when I go through, you know, an analysis like this. You know, one of the first things that I hear is, hey, Frank, looks like you got a good deal. And, you know, that's talking, that's someone talking, looking back in hindsight. You know, I don't care, you know, when you look back at a property, you know, if you bought a property today and then we look back, you know, three, four, five, ten years from now, someone's always going to say, looks like you got a good deal, looks like you got a good deal. The problem with people who don't take action is they're looking for the good deal today when what they're looking for is they're looking back in hindsight, right? You're not going to get hindsight today. Hindsight is hindsight for a reason. It's because you're looking back okay you can't look back when you're looking in the present so the, the one thing to get a good deal the way you get a good deal is to get in the game and buy something okay that's how you get a good deal so that is irrelevant when you talk about looks like you got a good deal right at the time market value for that property was what I paid for it so you know the good deal scenario is because we're looking backwards. Let's start with what we have to work with today, get in the game and make some uh, decisions and get some cash flow coming. Then in five years, 10 years, whatever it is, you can always look back and say, you know, your friends and family go, hey, it looks like you got a good deal. Yep, sure did, right? Okay, and the other thing I hear is number two, you know, I'm not sure that I would live there, right? And this is an investor making a terrible, terrible mistake. What they're saying is they're projecting their personal feelings on the investment property. Now, let's break down investing in real estate. Investing in real estate is not an emotional game, right? It's not like you're buying a property for yourself and you're saying, well, I, I don't like the kitchen. I don't like the flooring. I don't like the, the cupboards. I don't like the carpet. That's not what it's about. It's about cash flow. It's about numbers. It's about making the investment work, okay? So whether you would live in the property or not is completely irrelevant to whether it's a good investment or not okay so let's just eliminate that right out the get-go number three people ask me how do I know how much to charge for rent well this is a pretty easy one right I mean there's a way we can go out into the marketplace and take a look I mean it's the same way that you decide on what you pay for anything right so you're gonna go out if you're gonna buy a toaster you're gonna buy a television you're gonna buy a car how do you decide how much you're gonna pay well you look at what other prices are other toasters, other televisions, other cars. Same thing here. How much rent do you charge? How much are your competitors charging? Right? So that's one of the ways that we decide how much to charge. And we'll show you how to do all this stuff, right? Number four, how do I find and screen tenants? Now, this is a big one. This comes back to the fear, you know, that people have in their mind. What if I buy a property and I can't find anybody to rent it? You know, let's just put that to rest right now. Vacancy rates are 1.4%. You have more apartment block owners right now converting their apartment blocks to condos. Now, what does that do? That basically 
takes that stock of rental properties off the market, lowering the vacancy rate. I mean, I don't know how much lower we can get than 1.4%. So let's just forget about trying to find tenants. Is that going to be hard? Because I can tell you exactly where you can put ads for free and have your phone ringing off the hook and show you exactly how to screen the tenants so you only take the cream of the crop and put them into your investment property. And number five, how do I get the down payment money to buy the property? And here's a question that a lot of people ask. And, and what I just want to dissuade you from is, you know, hopefully you're not one of these guys that's been watching all these late night infomercials and, you know, somebody gets parachuted into some obscure town in the United States and they have 24 hours to buy an investment property with zero down. And, you know, they buy this property below market value. They don't put any money into it. They've got a positive cash flow by the next day and, you know, they go and sell it a week later and they made $50,000. I mean, that's, that's not realistic, right? Let's get realistic here. And we're talking about a long-term investment strategy. How do you get the down payment money? There's a number of different ways, right? I mean, you deal with traditional banks, you deal with mortgage brokers, you deal with private lenders. If maybe your credit is not 110%, we can talk about doing things with joint venture partners where you're bringing two investors together, together to partner, to buy an investment property. And one of the best ways that I love to get the money to invest in properties is what I call unlocking dead money. You know, unlocking dead money is so huge and most people don't even look at this. They don't even realize how they can unlock dead money. And one of the places, two of the places you have some dead money is one of them might be in your RRSPs. I mean, how is your RRSP doing today? Have you made a pile of money in your RRSP? Have you noticed a huge increase in value of your RRSP? Probably not. And for some people, a lot of people, that's dead money. How do you unlock the dead money in there? How do you actually access the money inside your RSP without having a taxable event and pulling it out, but being able to use it in your own personal investment properties? That's something we can show you to do. And the other thing is what we call the Smith Maneuver and show you how to unlock the dead equity that's sitting in your primary residence in your home. Okay, so show you how to do all these things. But these questions are common questions and there's very, very simple answers in terms of how you can answer these questions and get these things done. Now, the real estate investing process, I want to take you through a to Z, so you have a full overview of how I work with my clients, okay? The first step that we do right from the beginning is to set your goals. You know, if, if I said to you, you're going to drive from here to California and you had no roadmap, I mean, what would be the point? You're going to hop on the highway, you're going to cruise all around, you're going to take left turn, right turn, you're not going to know where you're going, you probably get lost, and you may never get there, okay? Same thing with investing in real estate. Set your goals, set your plan, right? First things first, make a reason why why are you investing in real estate okay for most people they say well I want the money I want the cash flow I want the equity for what what is the reason is it because you want to be able to send your kids to college you want to be able to you know have something to pass down as a legacy to your family you know you want to build a real estate investment for your retirement so you can retire early you know what is the reason okay it's not just the money what does the money mean to you that's what I mean the reason why then what you do is you make a plan you figure out how many properties do I need to own to realize that why. What's my timeline for getting those properties and acquiring them? Then we come up with some investing criteria. Now again, we don't want to make this an emotional decision. We want to make this a logical investing decision. The only way you can do that is by having some investment criteria up front. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to determine a minimum cash flow, monthly cash flow number. Hopefully we're going for positive cash flow. It's nice to have that up front and have that in your mind. Say, hey, I'm looking for you know 200, 100, 50. Is it 250? Is it 300? Whatever the number is, let's come up with a minimum cash flow number so that can be a guideline for you to now say this property meets my criteria and I want to buy it. Okay, And that leads us to the second thing. We have to evaluate the property. Once you've got your criteria and your reason why and you know how many properties you want to buy and all that kind of good stuff, we start to have to evaluate property. Now what is evaluating property? It's about going out and looking at property. you got to get your feet in the property. You know, you're not going to buy a property sight unseen, so you need to get in there, need to touch it, need to feel it, need to take a look at them, you know, take a look under the hood, take a look at the roof and start to evaluate. Is this the right one? The way we do that 
is not only by going and looking at it, by running the numbers. So again, we're talking about the investment spreadsheet there, right? So you plug in all the numbers. Hey, does this one work? Does it meet my criteria? The things we have to do are maybe determine the rents. How much money can we get per month for this place? Does it cash flow? How much money can I put down? You know, all these sorts of things go into deciding whether you're going to purchase that property. And when you finally find the one that meets your need, you go ahead and you purchase it. So you get all your financing options in place and you make sure that you've got everything in place to complete the financing. Of course, we're going to get you pre-approved ahead of time. But then you go out and you make an offer. And again, you're buying on logic, not emotion. So you want to make sure if it hits these numbers, you're prepared to pull the trigger and go ahead and purchase the property. And then once you purchase it, you're going to have a possession date. So that's the day that you take possession of the property. You're going to know that in advance. Now, having known that, that, this is where we're going to start to extract profit. You see, if there's any repairs that need to be made, you're going to arrange for that ahead of time because you know when you're going to get possession of the property. You don't want to get the possession of the property, then start arranging for repairs if it needs any because that's going to start eating away at your cash flow. So you need to start doing this up front. We're going to pre-market for tenants. So again, if you know you're going to have that property a month later, two months later, you're going to start to market for tenants in advance, start collecting applications. So that day one, when you get that property, boom, you can get a tenant in there. And again, you're not eating at your cash flow and then you're gonna have a proper tenant agreement that's gonna protect you as the landlord to make sure that the tenant upholds their responsibilities and after you get the tenants in there you're gonna start extracting cash flow positive cash flow every single month now once you've done that we move to the last step which is rinse and repeat right the whole idea is that you want to continue to do this because as you start to buy one property you're gonna end up building your equity both through natural price appreciation as the market goes up and as the tenants continue to pay that mortgage down now the nice thing that when that happens happens is that you can actually go back to the bank and say hey I've got some equity in this property I'd like to pull this money out and now you can buy another property or maybe if you want to be a little quicker to the gun if you have the finances and the and the investment you go ahead and do it off your own on your own but if you don't this is the time when maybe you start looking at a partner and someone else who wants to get in the game you guys can partner together and buy a property together and once you do that, you start getting more properties and more properties and generating more cash flow. And now it allows you to look at other cash flow opportunities. I mean, maybe you want to look at potentially having a business and so maybe let's start looking at some business opportunities or there's a huge opportunity maybe at investing in property in the United States. Whatever it is, this is the springboard to get you going and start generating cash flow and wealth for yourself. And this is the process that we move through. We set your goals, evaluate property, purchase the property, start to extract profit, and then rinse and repeat and continue to do this process over and over. And you need a good mentor, someone that's going to walk you through this process and help you hand in hand get this done so that you can generate cash flow and wealth for yourself. Now, I want you to consider something. I want you to consider this, all right? If What if you bought just two properties per year? You know, some people get in the game and in their mind and thinking, oh, this is great. My first year, I'm going to buy 10 investment properties. I'm going to have, you know, $2 million in equity. I'm going to have all this cash flow. Let's just back it up. Let's take some baby steps. One or two properties per year. You know, what if you brought two properties per year? How would you be, how would you feel 10 years out, right? I mean, would an extra $400 a month month in cash flow, you know, $5,000 a year, would that help you? You know, if you had an extra $5,000 in positive cash flow this year, you know, what would you do? Maybe you take a vacation, maybe you'd pay for your kid's school, you know, maybe you'd put a down payment on something else, maybe you'd buy a boat, whatever it is, if you had an extra $5,000 in your jeans this year, how would that help you? And finally, how would you feel having thousands of dollars in equity that you can actually see and feel? You know, one of the best things that I like about real estate investing is I can hop in my car any time of the day or night and cruise down the highway, cruise down to my place and take a look and say, that is my property. I can touch it. I can feel it. I can see it. Right? I mean, you buy stocks, you buy investments. And I mean, we all do that. I have nothing against it. But I mean, the management of the company goes and makes these decisions and these, you know, back boardroom dealings. And you have no idea what the heck is going on until you turn on the news and, you know, the markets drop, you know, 10, 20% and your money's all gone. I mean, this is something you can see it, you can feel it, you can deal with the tenants who are really your customers. And you really have something that's tangible. So that's what I like about real estate investing. And how would you feel if you were in this position? 
Now, here's what I'd like you to do. If you would like to be considered to be mentored by myself, to walk you hand in hand, step by step through this process of going out and setting goals and evaluating property, purchasing property and buying property and getting your tenants all in there in place. Here's what you're going to want to do on this page. There is an application. You see, I'm not just going to work with anybody. I want to work with people who are serious and motivated and who actually want to get this thing done and are serious about investing in property. So if you're curious, that's great. I'm glad you watched this video. I mean, stay in touch. That's fine. You know, I have no problem, you know, connecting with you down the road when things start to turn around for you and you want to get serious about getting in the game. But I'm really not interested in working with people who just want to cruise around, look at property and say, well, maybe this isn't for me. Who I want to work with are the people that are serious and motivated and want to get in the game. All right. And if that's you, there's going to be a form on this page. Just go ahead and complete the details on this form and you and I will have a chance to talk a little bit more about your goals, what you're looking to accomplish and let's get you into some real estate investing so that you can start making money generating cash flow and building your wealth for the long term. I'm Frank Versace and thanks for watching this presentation.